here, I'm going to do an example of playing a fat chord. So in my system, I teach you a method on how to find, because if you can find one note, guess what? You can find a million notes. Once again, the problem is not, uh, I know there's a lot of you that are watching this. You guys could kind of stumble your way and figure out melodies and stuff. You just don't know how to put it all together. Now that's a simple fix, right? Right? All you have to do, like a, all you have to do, like I said, is just be taught how to understand the language. So let's say you found this key, okay? So you found this key, right? Can I cover it? No, but well, you kind of see it. Let's say you found this one. Okay? So you found it, eventually you'd find that that was C. Okay? Let's say I said to find this key. Okay? So let's say you, and the, once again, this is the old, not old fashioned, this is a trial and error. I always tell people, you have a 1 in 88 key chance of finding the correct note. Okay? <laughs> so those are not too bad odds. Now, if you have to do it like this, then you are doing it way too hard. But I'm just trying to show you, even if you did it like this, it could still work. So I found a D. So I found a C and I found a D. Okay? Are you guys following me? Okay, good. All right. So what are we going to do with this? Well, this is what we're going to do with it. Okay, where's my PowerPoint? Is there? Okay, so that's, like I said, I want you to play this. Right? So obviously, guys, if you had to learn this, you can't see what I'm doing. So obviously, it's a little bit harder. You got to play by ear. This is true playing by ear. Not seeing something on the screen telling you what to do. This is playing by ear. If you can't figure this thing out, and if the method is not teaching you how to do this without seeing anything, then you're not being taught how to play by ear. All right? So I want you to play by ear. So if you wanted to play that, what's the common way of playing by ear if you try to do that? Well, the common ways, they would just say simply do this. They're like, ear, just copy me and just play all these notes, right? But if you have to do that, you will eventually get there, but that's still the hard way. So a lot of people think that that's the easy way to play because they're just giving you the answers, but that's not the easy way. That's still the hard way of playing by ear, all right? So let's look at this unconventionally okay now we're gonna look at it unconventionally but I do see a question so having to know what you're hearing doesn't that involve theory ah that is such an amazing question I gotta say it again the question was so having to know what you're hearing doesn't that involve theory okay so here's my view I don't know if you've seen any of my videos where I talk about theories or facts okay I do not call theories that actually work and that really explain how music works a theory I call them facts so most people yes they'll say that you gotta learn theory now what they're trying to say is that you're trying to learn see theory was created to try and explain how music works okay okay so theory sorry Theory was, I thought, I thought the board was falling. I heard a sound, so I thought the board was falling. That has happened, okay? So theory was created to try and explain how music works, okay? Music works one way, okay? Music works one way, but theory was created to try and explain how those greats were able to play amazing stuff. You know, so like, you know, the Beethoven, the box, you know, they're doing stuff like this. Right, so they're playing all that stuff. And the, the people, they always wondered, how are they getting all these great music? Well, they were gifted, but they were gifted and they can play by ear. That's the part that most people are missing. They play by ear. And when I say play by ear, I'm not just saying something that they just play and, you know, uh, and it just happens. No, they understand the language. That's the art of playing by ear. If I have to use my ear only to play by ear, I'm doing it the hard way. The art of playing piano by ear is understanding what you're doing. So what you're basically saying is, do you need theory? No. You need musical facts. Theories that have been tested, that they work according to music works, not theory that's telling you how to read something, then I call those facts. So when you get to know me a little bit more, I'll refer to musical facts on how music works. Okay, so you don't need to know theory, you need to know facts. The theories have to be tested. I did a couple live, other live, any key music lives where I talked about minor keys. That's a theory, but it's, it has been, I proved that it's not a correct theory. So minor keys, it's not a correct theory. Okay, so I did a whole one hour teaching on that, so I broke it down. Minor keys, I also talked about inharmonic equivalence. Inharmonic equivalence, 
that was correct to some point, but it's being incorrectly taught. So I also did a live teaching on explaining that. Those are the theories that I dispute, right? And I show when they have inconsistencies, then they're not musical facts. So to answer your question, you need to learn musical facts. So when you play by ear, you need to understand what you're playing. Theory, if it's not tested, right? I'm not talking about because it's been around for centuries that we accept it. So something like a, like a B flat, uh, sorry, a B sharp, that's an incorrect theory, okay? So we need to understand facts, and that's basically what you learn. You need to understand musical facts, how something works. Now, there's a lot of theories that are correct, but we need to take them from theory and start labeling them as musical facts. Music has semitones and tones. That's a theory, but it's not a theory, it's a fact, right? That's how music works, okay? So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, okay? So, but let's look at that fat chord. Remember I said I wanted you to find, uh, we found the C and we found the D, all right? I want you to play this so you can't see it, but watch this, okay? Let's break it down. I want you to write this down. Here we go. One over two. Okay? Actually, I want you to write it as Roman numerals. One over two. I leave it up for another second while I also write it down. Okay? Actually, I'll leave what I have on the board because I like how it looks. Okay? Hopefully, you guys wrote that down as I am writing it down. Where can I write it down? I'll write it down over here. So, one over two. Okay? Hopefully, you guys got that. Okay? Great. So, let's go here. So what's the 1 and 2 in the key of C? Well, if we know our C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, and then it starts again, what would be the first note in that scale? What would be the second note in that scale? Exactly. <laughs> C and D. I know you guys know that, right? So we know it's the 1 and 2 would be C and D. Okay? So therefore, we have C over D. That's the 1 over the 2, which is what I said, okay? So I'll let you guys write that. Remember I did a little quick example where, where, you, where you actually found the C and you found the D, okay? Now there's reasons why this works, but I'm going to show you a quick example, okay? Uh, just a quick thing how this works. As an intermediate player, I know, I'm, I'm assuming that you know how to play your major and your minor keys, okay? I'm definitely assuming that you know how to do that. Okay, well, I'm also assuming that, that you know what type of chords go on the one and the two, all right? Is there anybody here that doesn't know what chords go on the, the one and the two? If you don't know what chords go on the one and the two, let me know. And once again, this is not, for me, I'm just doing a quick example, right? Um, that's not learning. So if you're watching this on a replay, and you come here and we share what it is, that's not learning. I just told you something, I didn't teach you. I just told you, all right? Got to know the difference between teach and told, okay? So then that would be told. So I'm assuming that you guys know that already. So let's move on from that, okay? All right? So once again, that's what I assume, right? Everybody knows what type of chords goes on the one and two. If you didn't know, the ones are major, twos are minor. Now you need to understand why. That's more important, right? Why those are the case, right? So all you got to do with this to play this fat chord is simply take the one and the two, which we know is C and D in the key of C, right? And then we play the C major over the D minor, okay? So basically you'll have something like this, all right? C major over D minor. So if we play it, we have the C major and then we have the D minor. How does that sound? Well, it sounds okay, but when you place them together, you get the same chord, the same fat chord that you were trying to play. You get that just by thinking easy. It's just a one over the two, right? And by the way, the language of music is numbers, okay? So if you can't play in every key or play by ear, it's because you haven't mastered numbers. And I know a lot of people know scale degrees, but they haven't mastered them, okay? Because you have to master them a specific way, okay? So we have the C major over the D minor, right? Guess what? This forms a nice minor 11 chord simply by thinking easier, all right? So when you try that in any key, you'll see how much easier that is to play than all of these, you know, the copy me tutorials or the, you know, all of those things, you know? 
to, to, to be able to, you know, sheet music that tells you everything. Just think of one over two. And more importantly, you should be able to play it in every single key, every single, every single place that you did, every single place that you desire to play it, right? You should be able to play it, right? How you can think as well as ask yourself, okay, I have in my C major over my D, how far is C from D? Is it a tone or a semitone? And I'm going to ask you guys this because I'm in my teacher mode. And when I'm in my teacher mode, I'm not moving. All right, how far is C from D or D from C? What's the distance, a semitone or a tone? Somebody type that, all right? Because I want you to see the majority or the main reason why people are struggling to play by ear because they're looking at music too hard. It's not really that hard. Thank you very much, Mike. It's only a tone. So all I want to do, if I want to duplicate, let's say I don't even know the numbers in every key. All I have to do to duplicate this fat chord, as long as you know your major chords and minor chords in every key, if you want to duplicate this, even if you didn't know the numbers, all you got to do is think this one at the top of it is a tone above it. And I just got to make it uh, major, sorry, tone below the D. So therefore, if I wanted to, let me put it like this. Now I'm in my teacher's hat. When I'm in my teacher's hat, I, I don't move on unless somebody answers. So thank you, Mike. Hopefully you'll answer, okay? And this is how I teach in the live uh, NEQ Music System membership because I want to make sure you get results. For me, just giving you the answers and I know it, that's not teaching. You have to know it. You have to understand it. So let's do this, all right? And um, sorry, I can't see. It just says S uh, Nick Kick 15. So sorry, I don't know your real name, but uh, I just say what I saw there. So if I wanted to do the same chord, let's say if I had an E flat at the bottom, right? What would be, so sorry, E flat. Sorry, I was thinking something else. So if I had E flat at the bottom, which note would be at the top, okay? All right, so all you have to do is think. So once again, here, when we did it, we had a D minor at the bottom, and at the top, we had a C. And we know that the C is a tone below D. So if I was here, and I was at the E flat, and I went one tone above, sorry, not one tone above, I, what would have to be at the bottom, okay? At the bottom, sorry. <laughs> at the top, I'm answering it while telling you, okay? So if we had the E flat, all you got to think, right, is you know that it's going to be, okay, it's Nikki, how you doing, Nikki? All right, great. Okay, so what note would be at the top? If we, were, if we wanted to do the same chord, right, it's a one over two, right, and the chord, and this was the example of the C major over the D minor, we're going to do the same thing here, what note would have to be at the top? Thank you very much, right, who said that? Mike. Mike, thank you. You said D flat. Exactly. So all I do is make the E flat minor and the D flat major. And when I do that, and make sure you try this as well, right? I have the E flat as a minor, the D flat at top as a major, and I get that wonderful fat chord. Okay? Let me do one more, all right? I want to do one more. And that's a musical fact, okay? So let's do one more. Um, I want you guys to tell me. Okay, if the bottom note was, um, if the, if the bottom, oh, let me do it at the top. Let's say the top was an A major, okay? If I want to do that same chord, what would be at the bottom, okay? What would be at the bottom? If A major is at the top, what's going to be at the bottom? Okay, and I'll wait. I know that there's a little bit of a lag that, uh, you know, when I say something, it takes a little bit before it shows up, Okay. Okay, so Mike, that would not be the answer, okay? So once again, this is not the bottom. This is the top. So this is like this. This is the top. D flat major was the top here. C major was the top here. So what would be at the bottom? I want to know what's going to be at the bottom. What's going to be here, okay? All right, and all right, so those of you that are watching, you always want to participate before we give answers, the reason why is because it allows you to really see if you really understand it or not, okay? So I'll wait a second, okay, to see what do you guys see or what do you think is going to be at the bottom of this chord, if we're doing the same chord, right? All you got to do is look how it was formed in all of these other places, okay? So just let me know, okay?
Okay, and I'll wait a little bit. Okay, so once again, so we don't want to be guessing, okay? Understanding is not guessing. So let me explain it one more time, okay? If we're at A, now the piano's before me, okay? Now, let's say, even before we're at A, to, to get this answer here, all I did was I have a C major at the top. So if you look over here, you have a C major here, but at the bottom, I had a D minor. Now, you have to ask yourself, how far is C major, C from D, okay? So from C from D, that will give you this answer. Now, notice which one's at top and which one's at the bottom, okay? So don't confuse the order, right? Now, I'm just trying to show you if instead of using, now it's, this will be a lot easier after you've completed my volume two that would talk about numbers and mastering numbers and volume one and so forth, but I'm just showing you guys an example, okay? Now, you're going to get it, so you say B as well, okay? So you guys are not too sure. So let me do this again. Maybe I'm not, I'm, I'm going kind of quick, not explaining it properly, okay? So to get this answer, so once again, I'm not asking for you to, to if, you, if I was asking you guys to give me the note that should go at the top of the A, then you would be correct. It would be B, but that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking to do this exact chord, and I need something at the bottom, okay? So I, I know you say B minor. Okay, so if you're saying to put B minor here, let's see, all right, the re, let's see what it sounds like. If I were to have A major, B minor. Sorry, hold on. You guys are correct. I'm wrong. <laughs> what was I thinking? You are correct. Sorry. All right, so Mike, I apologize. No, no, no. Mike, you are correct. I was, I was trying to do something else in my... Hold on. No, I'm not correct. I am... Okay, I am correct, right? Because a tone above this is B minor. So guys, forget, forget what I just said. You were right. Mike said he was right. Nikki was right. You guys are right. Okay, it's not G. You're right, okay? Because you can see a tone above A is B. I kind of, if I actually played it, then I would have seen that it was correct. So that's why, you see why you have to play by ear? Because I'm thinking in my head, okay, theoretical is this, and I think I was trying to ask a different question. So even though I was seeing it, it wasn't still comprehending. So it, the answer is B minor. So thank you guys so much for showing me up. You see, I know this stuff and I still made a mistake. This is correct. It's not the G. So guys, forgive me, okay? Why was I thinking G? Because I wanted to do another example, but it wasn't this. So I was wrong. So yes, a tone above it has to be below. So it is a B and it is a B minor. Excellent. You guys got it. Thank you very much. So yeah, Richard, sorry, it's not the G minor because if it was a G minor, it would sound like that. So that's why I was trying to say that. Uh, you know, before, but that's what I was thinking. I was like, I said the G in my head, which is incorrect, but it, it, for some reason I was thinking that that's supposed to be the answer and I forgot to switch that off, okay? Excellent, guys, that's right. So that's how you form it. So you'll be able to form that chord in every single key, right? So now when I hear someone play that chord, I know what they're doing, right, how to form it, but then you still got to learn the language on how to use it. So let me show you a quick, quick example of how to use it. Okay, I'm not thinking hard. So let's say if we had our one chord, we know it's uh, C. Okay, I'll just do the letters, okay? Um, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, it should be numbers, but, um, okay? So if we had the C major chord, right? And then I'm gonna go to my G major, okay? Let's say I'm gonna go to my G major. There's a principle that I teach Okay, that's a good question, Mike. I'm going to get it in a second. There's a principle that I teach in the system called an approach. An approach is like walking. You can go somewhere. You can take an approach to get somewhere. Okay? I do this in uh, even some training that I, that I have, I'm going to tell, tell you about in a second, that talks about advanced arrangements. Right? The key to playing advanced arrangements is by not having to think advanced. So if what I have to do is, there's an appro a principle called an approach. What I'm going to do for this approach all I'm going I'm going to do for my approach is I'm going to do one semitone 
above my destination, okay? So my destination is wherever I'm trying to get to, all right? So that says one semitone above my destination. I'm going to use that type of chord on the, on the approach, okay? That's one semitone above G. So now my question is, what, is, what note is one semitone above G, okay? All right, so right here, I'm going to do a one semitone above destination, but I'm going to use this type of chord, okay? So I want you guys to tell me. So, right, one semitone above. Remember, the, the, it has to be above G, okay? One semitone above G. I'm going one semitone above my destination. So, Mike, I know you said G flat, but I want to come, for, I want to come from one semitone above my destination. My destination is G. So if my destination is G, I have to come from above, okay? Thank you, A flat. So what's going to happen is, all I have to do on this beat here, I'm going to put an A flat, right? But I'm going to make it like this type of chord. So I'm going to have my A flat as a minor, okay? A flat as a minor. Therefore, if the A flat is a minor that's at the bottom, what would be the note that is at the top, okay? So A flat is a minor and then we have the top. What should be the top, right? Your answer should be whatever is a tone below this, below, tone below the A flat, right? <laughs> okay, so what would I put at the top, okay? This is what I'm gonna use here to get to my G major, but what would I put at the top, okay? And I'll wait a second again. Now, once again, I have my teacher hat, so once again, I need an answer, right? I want to know that you guys understand me, okay? So my question, once again, there may be a lag in my chat, or let me check the chat again. I want to know, uh, we notice the A flat is one semitone above my G, right? But now I want to use that type of chord, this type of chord, on the A flat. So what is above the A flat, right? And, okay, so Mike says to repeat the question, so once again, Right? I'm trying to, I know I'm going one semitone above my destination. My destination is G. So one semitone above G, as Mike, you answered, is A flat. So I want to use this same type of chord to get here. So it sounds nice. So, because we're using this principle in the NEP music system, which is a musical fact, not a theory, called approaches. Okay? So then I have my A flat minor, and all these ones at the bottom are minor. So I need the one that goes at the top, that is supposed to be a major. So I want to know what is the note that I'm going to make into a major chord at the top, all right? Because we know the top is going to be major. So what is going to be the note that goes with it, okay? All right? So remember, it has to be, it should be a tone below the A flat. And that's just, just a clue, all right? So we're mixing a couple things. When I teach you in the NEQ Music System how to see it easy, we keep things down to a semitone or tone level, but yes, you got to be prepared to be able to see it because it's going to be a lot of thinking, all right? So once again, we so it should be, what does it say um, here? Nikki, G flat, Mike, B flat, uh, Richard James, G flat. Exactly, guys, all right? So everybody that said G flat, you're correct, right? Because if you see here, the one at the bottom, the one at the top of this is a tone below this one. See, there's E flat, uh, the one at the top is a tone below. So if we have A flat minor, then the top has to be a G flat major, okay? So it's G flat major over the A flat minor. So therefore, when I'm playing, then it sounds like this. Right, it might not sound as good to you, but if you use different chords, right, that's very advanced, right? So if we had, Right, basic, but and I do this chord. Right? That's how you start to you have you use them to get to your destinations. So the key thing is you gotta learn and understand how to get to your destination. Then you can add all these advanced things. Okay? So that's the essence. Now if I wanted to do a two semitone approach, I could go. 
right? So let me set this up. Right? And that's how you use it. That's why when I hear some people play, I can hear the principles that are happening, right? So it's not just by chance. There's following musical facts, okay? All right. Yeah, there's, there's probably a huge delay, <laughs> okay? Yeah, there's a huge delay. Okay, great. So let's see. Okay, Mike asks, how is one minor and the two minor? Well, minors only happen in certain places. However, they can be used anywhere, okay? So when it's used on a one, right, I teach in terms of minor keys and people ask, hey, Robert, can the one be minor? Well, if you look at the one as minor, yes, you can say that it's one minor, but I know when the one turns into a minor, it's because the key switched, right? Because minors don't happen on ones. Now, if you see a minor on a one, it's because the key switched. If you see a minor on the five, it's the key switched, right? But you can tell yourself I'm using a minor on the five, right? Which is common in music, right? But I'm trying to tell you, right? If you can play in any key, you can spot the stuff and you don't see it hard. So hopefully that answers your question on Mike. The one can be minor, yes. However, in my book, the one is not really a minor, even though it is a minor, it's because the key switched. So it's really a different number in another key, okay? So, um, and I have not theory to prove it. I have the musical facts to prove it. That will be on another time, <laughs> okay? So basically, that's the essence. Hopefully you guys get that, right? So if I want to go to my five, if I want to go to my four, go to my one, if I go to my six, go to, go to my two, go to my three, right? That's how you play, by understanding what you're playing. Okay, so that's the essence on how it works, okay? And you don't have to learn by learning all this copy me stuff. You, what you got to be taught is how to understand, okay? Right, so the key to reaching your musical goals is you have to see music easy, okay? You can't see it complex. If you see music complex, then that's when you'll see that you'll have some challenges, okay? And you, won't, you don't want to have any challenges, okay? So to help you do this a little bit better, I actually have a video bundle that I have, which is at anykeymusic.com forward slash membership forward slash music dash with dash ease dash video dash bundle, okay? It'll teach you, there's a video training on musical runs with ease, the full, right? So how to do stuff like that. Right, but seeing it a lot easier, I have how to play fat chords with E. So similar to this, what I told you about, right? Stuff like that, how to see fat chords a lot easier, how to see the key to playing music with ease. I'm gonna teach you about that. Then I have a three-part series on how to play advanced arrangements with ease. If you go to that uh, website, or web, web link, I think it's actually in my, um, in the description as well. Now, if you're already an Any Key Music member, you don't want to go there because you already have access to all of these things, okay? So unless you want to um, just invest in that video bundle, because I know that there's a lot of people that are going to have questions about, okay, Robert, you have your Any Key Music system course and all of those things, but I don't know if I want to invest in the full thing right now, so I need to some more teaching that's going to really convince me that the method that you have can make music a lot easier. So what I highly recommend is I recommend going here and getting my video bundle, you'll see that you can actually get all of those for like a ridiculously, ridiculously, if I was teaching English, you get a wrong mark, all right? For a very low investment, all right? So it's like 40 something dollars or something like that for the video bundle. So that way you can actually try to get that, okay? Right, and everybody that gets that is also going to be invited to an exclusive workshop that I did last year right? It's a workshop on how to master the art of playing piano by ear and any key. In this workshop, it's two and a half hours. It's usually about $497, but you're going to get it free when you actually go here and you get the bundle, right? So that's going to be a part of a bonus that you're going to be able to get if you go there, okay? So I would say when you get a chance to, you can try to go there so you can actually hear how that goes, <laughs> okay? Now to answer a question, once again, anykeymusic.com, membership, music with ease, video bundle, okay? So Mike asked a question you asked, okay, the question was based on the question you asked about having, uh, having G, uh, the A minor on top, and the bottom B minor on bottom. So yeah, so uh, A major on the top and the B minor on the bottom.
Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I think, Mike, you're saying that you were answering based upon how I was phrasing the question. Yes, I think I was phrasing it incorrectly, Mike. Okay, so that's what was happening there. <laughs> I made a mistake on how I was phrasing it because you guys answered correctly. You said it's the, you know, I had the A major at the top and you guys were saying it's a B, Robert, it's a B. Robert, it's a B and you're telling me and yet I'm just, I, I, was, I was already saying in my head, well, if they say G, I know they didn't see it. So I, I pinned G in my mind and then I forgot to tell myself that that was the wrong answer and I forgot to switch it, okay? So that's really what happened, okay? So that's gonna be it for today. Hope you guys got a chance to get a little more insight how the Any Key Music system works and how you're gonna be able to reach your musical goals once you understand all of the principles of the Any Key Music system. And then when you get to the point to say, well, playing by ear is just the ability to play anything you hear, all right? So I'm gonna stay just for like two minutes to see if there is any questions. So once again, you can go to anykeymusic.com forward slash membership, music with ease video bundle, you'll be getting that uh, in an invite, right? And that's another thing, you gotta show up. If you don't show up to that workshop, uh, what happens is you kinda miss your opportunity to jump in, okay? So don't do that, all right? Because you wanna go here, right, to get a video bundle if you want, right? And um, that's how you can actually get more in depth of this teaching. And that allows you to get a better sense on how the Any Key Music system works, all right? So hopefully you guys were good. Um, we got through the glitches at the beginning but I think we got through, all right? And I don't think there are any questions, so I'm gonna call that the end for now. So once again, I look forward to helping you reach your musical goals, and I will be one step closer to doing that once you understand all the principles of the NEQ Music System. Have a great day, have a great night, or if you're watching this on replay, have a great time, all right? Hope you learned something. God bless, bye.